guys, welcome to Audrey's reading area. Alexa, what time is Audrey's reading area? Audrey reads in her area live at 5 o'clock p.m. Live at 5, you guys, and here I am. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here on this T-shirt Thursday. T-shirt Thursday, you guys, take a look. T-shirt Thursday, yes. So you guys have a little idea of what I'll be reading about today. Yes, 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 yes. Got my little Rubik's Cubes on my ears and on my little chair. So, Rubik's Cubes for kids. Rubik's Cube for kids. How to solve the Rubik's Cube in easy ways. Seven easy steps illustrated with color images to solve the legendary puzzle. Uh, for years I've been trying to solve this. Look, I got one side. I even got, sometimes I get a little of two sides. So I don't even know how to solve this thing. You think maybe this book here will help me too? You think? <laughs> I'm hoping. Ruby's Cues for Kids. Let's see. Um, this book is written by Matthew Clark. Matthew Clark, Rubik's Cube for kids. <laughs> I hope you guys are gonna love this. Yes, Rubik's Cubes for kids. Shout out to my grandbabies, Korea, Sana, David the Third. I call him D3. And um, Kaden, I love and miss you guys so much. Hopefully I'll get to see y'all soon. I pray every day that I will, look at me, get to see you soon. All right, you guys, are you ready to jump right in here? Don't forget, click that like button, hit that share button, go on over to YouTube and smack, smash, smash that subscribe button on Audrey's reading area. Come on, you guys. I need some more subscribers. I need about 300 more subscribers. Go ahead and subscribe for me. Well, all right, all right, all right. We're going to do the do. Let's jump right into the Rubik's Cube for Kids book how to solve it. It says challenge your children's logic skill and boost their IQ with the Rubik's raising the brain IQ with the Rubik's cube. So let's jump right in now. Seven steps, legendary puzzle. This looks like there's uh 10 chapters introduction. Rubik's Cube, seldom pronounced Rubik's Cube, is a standardized 3D secret that was invented over 30 years before and is still considered the most purchased gadget. Rubik's Cube. And you know, in case you don't know what it is, you can turn it, turn it like all these different ways to try and solve the colors. Make all of the colors on the same side like these. You want to have all the colors on the same side. I got one without reading this book. So let's see. Let's see. Determining the Rubik's Cube is considered an almost impossible task and challenges an IQ of uh, 160. As in, it was de it, determining the Rubik's Cube is considered as almost impossible as an almost impossible task and challenges an IQ of 160. Is it challenging? Absolutely not. With this easy step-by-step -step guide, you can quickly see that Rubik's cube can also be solved. There are many solutions for Rubik's cubes. Okay. All of these methods have di uh, different difficulties. Uh, for the kids or beginners, even to solve blindfolded dice. Mm. People usually have trouble solving the cube after completing the first face. Yeah, then you need help. Yep. The following tutorial shows you the easiest way to solve a cube with a beginner method. Using the technique described here, you can split the cube into layers and apply specific algorithms to solve each layer without damaging parts that have already been placed. After playing the Rubik's Cube for a few minutes, many people leave the Rubik's Cube and never pick it up again. I've seen people pull off the stickers 
and put the chains of stickers because they couldn't figure it out. That's not good. That's cheating, right? That's not solving it. The secret is that solving a cube without knowing the basic solution is almost impossible. We about to learn, aren't we? The tutorials that come with cubes purchased from the store can be very confusing, you think? Therefore, we have organized this article to make it more natural. And they added photos and videos. Hmm. You do not need to learn long, sophisticated algorithms to solve cubes using this method. The layer by layer method is easy for beginners and for kids. So Rubik's cube mechanism, Rubik's cube. Look at that Rubik's cube piece. Rubik's cube is actually 26 puzzles. You know what? I used to be able to do that. I totally forgot. I used to be able to do that. I don't, don't ask me how. There are three types of pieces. The centerpiece with monochrome labels for centerpieces all attached to the core. Edge piece. There are two stickers of different colors. The hub has 12 edge pieces. Corner pieces. Three stickers of different colors. The cube has eight corner pieces. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to show you on this one. So you have one two, three, four, those are corners, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight corner pieces. Okay, that much I can get. I'm following with them so far. <laughs> the core is in the Rubik's Cube. The core is in the Rubik's Cube. The Rubik's Cube holds all parts together and is attached to the central region with a rota rotating shaft. The important centerpieces are part of the core and cannot move with each other afterwards. Because of this, they are already resolved. So the middle pieces, says the, the middle pieces can't move. So the middle pieces are already resolved. So that means when we try to form our colors, we have to form it around the middle pieces. That's all I know. Let me read, <laughs> let me continue reading. <laughs> The resolution process actually moves all corners and edge pieces to the already loose middle part. That is only 20 out of 26 need to be resolved. For example, a, a blue centerpiece is always opposite a green centerpiece. Let's see. Oh yeah, the blue centerpiece is always opposite the green centerpiece. Nice to know. We got that. In a standard cube with a color scheme, no matter how much you try to encrypt the cube, it remains. The Rubik's Cube roll figures. Okay. Movement notes are created to transmit a series of movements through writing. When describing the solution using the follow, see, I'm already confused. I hope you guys can follow this book. When describing the solution using the following motion notation, conventional motion notation, the, me the mechanism is as follows. All faces receive letters. Rubik's cube face. Okay, let me show you the book. F for front, front facing the solver. So let's say the white piece right here is the front. It's facing me. I'm the solver, facing the solver. Okay trying to get all this down with you. B is the rear facing the opposite, the front, the rear facing the rear. R is the right side. Left is the left side, opposite side of the right. U is above the top side and D is the below, the opposite side. Hmm. Okay, I'm following it so far. I got it. <laughs> The medium letter turns its face 90 degrees clockwise, one turn. An apostrophe after the letter means that the face is turned 90 degrees counterclockwise, one turn. So the opposite of the way the clock moves is called counterclockwise. And that's on example R. Example R. 
A letter followed by a two means that the face is rotated 180 degrees. Double rotation, example, R2. See, they said that the instructions in the that came with the Rubik's Cube was kind of confusing. Mm -mm. I'm already confused, but I'm gonna keep reading. <laughs> I hope you guys are following, okay. It is difficult to find the CW slash C dash CW direction of the side, like B or D. Temporarily turn the cube to become side F. It is the most, the most tranquil side to face the CW slash CCW determined direction. So I'm gonna put this up here so you guys can read and then read. You can freeze it so you can read it. The solution of Rubik's Cube. Magic cubes are released one by one like other puzzles. Thus, the explication is segmented into levels. Various of uh, levels, various of which resolves the quantity of parts outwardly damaging the pieces created in the previous step. I thought they said easy. You guys following? Well, good. <laughs> I'll keep reading. Step one, loosen the edge of the cube solution from the topmost panel. Um, where's the pictures? I need pictures. <laughs> I need pictures. In this level, you need to solve four parts. First, select a color. In this design, we chose white. Chose the white. Also, chose white this time so that the models along the explication are relevant to the solution process. It is most beneficial to inaugurate with white, yellow. These are the most uncomplicated shades for immediate detection and are essential for speedy resolution, speedy solving. The edge pieces must be loosened adequately from each other because the correct edge piece and the wrong edge piece cannot be offset from one and another. For instance, to resolve white in this state, the green centerpiece is to the port side of the red centerpiece. So the port side, which would be that side. So this is the white centerpiece and this is the green centerpiece, which is the port side. Okay, let's put this down like that. All right. So the green and white edge pieces to the left of the red and white edge pieces must be separated, like in this image. One thing identifies, place the white border in the center of the white, not the center of the border. Okay. Step two, Rubik's Cube solution to loosen the corner section of the topmost tier. In this step, you dissolve the four corners of the upper level. Right, wrong, corner piece, corner pieces must not only correspond to the upper white color, but also to the left and the right color. See, we don't think about stuff like that when we're trying to solve this Rubik's Cube. We're, we, so it's basically saying, you gotta remember that this side is white and although you're trying to solve this, all of these surrounding pieces on the edges have colors, so when you're, when you're solving, you got to keep in mind, this is a green side. So you got to try to push all the greens to that side, all the yellows to this side, all the blues to this side and all the reds to that side. And this opposite side will be yellow because that's the, the centerpiece. So we go in by the centerpiece because the centerpiece is not movable, remember? Well, all right, let's continue. The Rubik's Cube, solving it, woo. I will say one time, <laughs> one time I was a substitute teacher at this school and um, it was a school for, it was like a math and science school. And the most trouble that I had in the class, one, in the, in, is one class where he had a Rubik's cube, mixed up all the colors, all mixed up. And he solved it in under four minutes. That was the most problems I had in that school. But this kid solved this in less than four minutes. I was like, maybe he needs to write this book because I don't know. 
he might make it seem easier. I don't know. Let's see if you guys can follow. Okay. So right wrong corner piece, corner pieces must not only correspond to the upper white corner, but also to the left and right color. See right and wrong picture. How to insert a corner piece at the specific or the specified position. First, find the unresolved white corner on the layer below and place it where you want it to be. Resolved, move D. Repeat for the other three corners. The solution for the corner with the white sticker in front of the top third case above is done in two steps. First, can you see? Align the corner so that the white label appears on one's, um, one of the sides. Execute with R, D2, R, D. Then, which remember we named them, we labeled them in the front so you can rewind the video to remember the labels. Okay, then solve with the second case solution, R, D, R. If the white corner is on the top level but is in the wrong place, see the wrong picture above or below or is misaligned, insert a non-white edge there and you will get a white corner is the bottom layer, then interpret accurately. So step three, guys following me? All right. Loosen the edge piece of the Rubik's Cube solution from the middle layer. Excuse me. In this step, you will resolve the four edges of the middle level and complete the first two levels, aka F2L. Hmm. Start position. Turn the cube over so that the separated layer is at the bottom. First, I, I'm not going to do this with you because... I don't want y'all to see that I'm not good at this Rubik's Cube, but I'm going to try it once I go off, off the air. <laughs> okay, first select the edge piece that is currently at the top and place it on the cor correct center piece to get an inverted T shape. These are mirror algorithms that do, do essentially the same thing. One is for the edge piece to the right of, of, of the solution location, and the second is for the left piece. Repeat for the other three edge pieces. If the edge piece is in the correct position, see, I gotta do that, but not align, see the illustration, insert the wrong edge piece in this position. As a result, the, the desired edge piece returns to a higher level. Then use the appropriate algorithm to resolve correctly. So they're saying, see how I have the yellows on this side, the blues, the reds, and the green? We got to match it to the middle piece, the middle. So mine are matched, but I still, I'm not getting it. I'm just, I'm just saying. Well, I'm still not getting it, but we'll see. Step four, Rubik's Cube solution step to align the edge piece of the last layer. Because they're saying that this is how to solve it in a simple way. So you guys should be able to follow what I'm saying, right? <laughs> in this step, the parts are not completely dissolved for the first time, but only in the right direction. <clears throat> in other words, the goal of the level is to form a cross on the cube. The edges do not necessarily have to match the color of the pages. This algorithm increases the cube by one status each time it is executed. In other words, once you run the, this alg, the cube in status one will be raised to status two and so on. Who told the person that wrote this book that they were telling us in a simpler, sim in a simpler, in a more simple way. <laughs> Therefore, you should apply this warning one to three times to complete this step. Hmm. Step five, rearrange the corners of the last Rubik's, cu Rubik's Cube solution layer. The goal of this step is to rearrange the last four corner pieces. Watch out. Our goal is to place the corner in the right place. You don't have to align them properly. For example, look at the picture on the right. The permutations of the yellow, green, red corner pieces are smooth. 
There are only two different pending states in this step. Two correctly interchanged corners are next to each other. Well, I got these. I'm not, I'm not going to mess these up. <laughs> two correctly interchanged corners are next to each other. Two well-arranged corners are at an angle to each other. Hmm. If you can't find two properly started corners, sorted corners, start the top U until you see them. You have to be there. The algorithm turns the three corner pieces counterclockwise, leaving the fourth corner intact. When two adjacent edges are appropriately aligned, turn the top clockwise once. This movement repositions the corner in a situation where only one correctly rearranged corner is left, while the other three corners have to be turned. You get it, don't you? <laughs> they have to be turned counterclockwise. By simply running the above algorithm, we completed this step during the, this execution. Don't forget to run this algorithm at right angles. If there is a correctly sorted corner on the far right, so the algorithm image is here. If you have two well-ordered corners on the diagonal, you only have to run the above algorithm once. The angle doesn't matter. Cubes will state two adjacent well-ordered edges. Then follow the directions for the two adjacent corners above. You getting it, you guys, right? Go ahead and get your Rubik's Cubes. Go get your Rubik's Cubes. Woo, woo. Woo, woo. <laughs> Step six, final layer, Rubik's Cube Solutions uh, Corner Alignment. So the goal of this step is to align the four corners of the last layer we just swapped. These algorithms actually do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. Hmm. The first algorithm aligns the three edges clockwise, and the second algorithm aligns the three corners counterclockwise. Therefore, you can only learn one if needed. If you have only one corner, like a picture of algae, you were lucky. Run the appropriate algae once to complete this procedure. If the two edges are aligned or not aligned, run one of these algae uh, randomly from a different angle so that only one corner is present and rerun the appropriate algae and, and complete this step. Hmm. I see, I see. Step seven says final. Replace the edge piece on the last layer of the Rubik's Cube solution. The purpose of the step is to get the edge of the last layer in the correct position. Therefore, the Rubik's Cube is completely solved. Like the alga in the previous step, these algorithms do the same, but in the opposite direction. The first algorithm rotates three edges counterclockwise, and the second rotates three corners clockwise. For this reason, you need to learn only when necessary. I hope you guys have gotten this, because not me. With this step has only two states. Without the correct edge piece or exact ex exit um, edge piece, of course, all correctly placed edges piece edge pieces can also occur, which means that the cube is already completely solved. If you have loose edge pieces, run the above algorithm to complete the whole Rubik's cube. Nice. If the edges are not loose, running one of the above seaweeds regardless of angle, will release one of the advantages, then solve with the appropriate algorithm. Congratulations. Practice the solution until you solve the Rubik's Cube without paying attention to the algorithm. Remember. So kind reader says, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed the, the book. Well, listen, this was still difficult for me. I hope it was easy for you. But I, and I'll probably try to get an easier um, Rubik's Cube for Kids book because this one, like if you don't know what these things mean, algae and algorithm and seaweed and things like that, 
then it's going to be kind of hard. It says seaweeds, regardless of angle. Um, if you don't know what those words mean, as far as a Rubik's Cube, then you're probably going to have a hard time with it. But that's why I showed you each page, so that you can solve the Rubik's Cube. Now, this is the white side, and I'm guessing that when you build these things, like we got yellow, yellow over here. I got most of the yellow here, and I got some blue on the bottom, so I'll leave the blue here. But I got to remember yellow is on this side, so this should be like here. Well, this is gold. See, they have a gold, and then they have a yellow, which are two different colors. Can you see? Those are two different colors, which is weird weird yeah so we have if you look at the centerpiece here it's yellow and the centerpiece here is gold which kind of makes it a little difficult but this is the Rubik's Cube and I hope you guys can use that book and solve it let me know you guys let me know if you were able to solve the Rubik's Cube all right, with that being said, thank you guys so much for joining me here at Audrey's Reading Area on this, yes, T-shirt Thursday. Yes, I have Rubik's Cubes on my shirt. Yes, I do, along with Pac-Man. It says game on, baby, game on. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here and listening to me read fun, exciting books like Rubik's Cube for kids, how to solve this book, this, uh, this cube. I hope you guys are able to listen to it and because I'm going to try it again when I um, end this video. But thank you so much for being here. Shout out to my grandbabies, Korea, Sanaa, D3, and Kaden. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope me reading things like this and all my other books encourages you to read. Pick up a book and read. Man, I got some fun and exciting books for you next week. Oh, you got to be here. You got to be here. To listen to these books like this some fun and exciting books that i'll be reading so don't forget be here be here be here i'll see you again tomorrow live l i v e live at five you guys i will see you tomorrow and next week right well all right all right all right don't forget go on over to youtube smash that subscribe button for me right there right there on audrey's reading area and i'll see you again tomorrow live at five shout out to my mom who is always here shout out to uh my friend mark Thank you, Mark, for being here. Thank you, thank you. You better call me. You don't be calling me. You need to call me. But anyway, you guys, thanks for being here. And I will see you again tomorrow, live at 5. Audrey's reading area. Don't forget.